You are in for a treat for episode three because I have my first ever guest, Mr. Dustin Pizer. And although he is not typically on video or on a mic, he did great. He was an excellent first guest. We are talking about all sorts of stuff leaving a legacy. We're talking about the secret to a long lasting relationship. He puts me on the spot at the end and asks me a question and asks all the listeners a question. So I hope you leave your comment after the show. We also talk about Dustin losing his parents and the impact that that's had on his life and the perspective that he's gained from that. Uh, We share a great bottle of wine And uh, there are a few times if you're watching the show, you're going to notice that I'm telling Dustin to push the mic up to his mouth because he keeps, he likes to talk with his hands. And so he moves that mic away from his mouth sometimes. So you'll catch that as well, but our audio should be all good. The, The other thing that happens in this episode is that there are two things that Dustin surprises me with, uh, you know, just start a, start a show, do a podcast, interview your loved one. And you'll learn something new. (laughs) At least I did two things. So that was very interesting. There's some, there's actually a lot to unpack there that we'll have to do in a future episode, but you'll get a little sneak peek in this one. And of course, like I said, in episode two, I asked Dustin, why aren't we married yet? So let's cue the intro and let's get uncorked. Hello, I'm Crystal Vilkaitis. I'm a curious, wine-loving entrepreneur who loves to learn and have open and honest conversations. Join me and my amazing guests as we talk about all sorts of relatable business and life stuff. It's my goal that you'll have fun, learn something new, and get inspired. Wine is not required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Welcome to episode three of Crystal Uncorked. I am Crystal Vilkaitis, and I am joined by my very first guest, Dustin Pizer. Hi, everybody. Yay! Uh, you know, this is a pretty exciting moment. I don't know if you feel this way, but it's definitely exciting for me to have a guest. And you've been so supportive over the years of this being an idea. Dustin has heard it all. And the other night, after I scripted my first episode, I think it was, we went out to dinner and I was like, who should my first guest be? We were brainstorming ideas and he threw out him. And I was like, I thought about that. And then we talked a little bit more. I'm like, yeah, I feel like you would be a perfect first guest. So thank you for being my first yes, guest. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Dustin Pizer is my boyfriend of, we've only been together for 11 years. Um, and he is a realtor in Southern California. He is from New York. He also is an entrepreneur and has a couple of businesses that he is running. We're going to talk about it all in this episode. But what I want to, uh, I want to just take a step back and tell me how long, oh shit. One of my questions was how long have we been together? I already gave it away. I was, I wanted to see if you knew how to answer that. If you knew the amount of years, but I I was thinking 10, I think I thought it was 10 years. Yeah. Well, it'll be 11 in May. So, um, how did we meet? We have uh, very good close friends, mutual friends, um, Julie and Jeff. Uh, I guess they were out to eat. Well, I don't. I don't guess. I know that they were out to eat um, in uh, Carlsbad Village uh, years and years ago. Um, I was living in Vista at the time uh, with roommates, and um, Jeff uh, had made the invite for me to come out and uh, uh, meet his girlfriend's friend, Crystal. And so we did, and we partied hard and good, and. Uh, Sort of have been partying. I pushed you in a bush, right? You pushed me in a bush. Yep. And then I pushed you in the bush. And then, oh my God, (laughs) that's in Pfizer. We're off to a good start, everybody. You're ridiculous. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh, we also, (laughs) well, we're uncorked, which we totally did a bad job of. We have wine. I didn't even talk about the wine. So that's a perfect way to segue into this. Hey, well, hold the phone. Just drink it right away. Are we going to cheers? Mm-hmm. Grab that bottle so we can show the bottle to the people. So we are filming. We are on uh, on the road here for Crystal and Cork. We're in Paso Robles. And we have ourselves a bottle of Malbec 2017 from the resort that we are staying at, which I, oh, I, I need to see the bottle so I can 
remember how to pronounce this. Allegrato. Allegrato. Am I saying that right? That looks right. Allegrato. Gorgeous resort. They grow five different varietals here on the grounds. And the Malbec, what we learned, is definitely a little bit more spicy than what you would find in Argentin Argentina, uh, which is known for their Malbecs. But this is freaking good, right? It's what do you? Good. So can we Everybody cheers? <laughs> Every wine is great. Um, cheers. I love you. Love you too. Oh, you got to look at me. Mm. Oh man, it is a really good wine. Um, we did a little, we did a little wine tasting first before uh, filming this, and uh, that was our favorite. So we grabbed a bottle for the show. Okay, so also the night that we met, we sang karaoke, and our song. It's hilarious to look back on our song choice because it was "We Got Married in a Fever." by June Carter and Johnny Cash, which is the opposite of what Dustin and I have done. Yeah, we haven't got married at all. <laughs> no, there's been no fever. It's just, you know, we've been dating for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. We're going to get to that. I'm going to ask you that question because people are... People She's going to are... propose everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Surprise! I'm not. I would. I wouldn't. A lot of people ask me that. Why wouldn't? Why don't you just propose? And for me, I I'm a hopeless romantic. I've just always seen that I get proposed to. So that no, that's not going to happen. Um, but before I I don't want to go there yet. I want to end the show with that question. What I want to talk more about is the fact that okay, we've been together for almost 11 years. We have traveled to so many places. Like we've been really fortunate to see so much of the country and the world. And I want to hear from you. What is, this might be hard because I know we've had awesome trips, but what would be one of your, do you have a top favorite of where we've been? Italy is easily the top favorite. Italy is the kind of place, um, you know, gives you very little reason to, to come back to the United States actually. Um, it was really just a, a great experience. And one of the, 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 the great things um, in that experience was the um, sort of living in the cloud of not really understanding what was being said around you and a, a real disconnect of um, sort of living in, in that very moment. Um, you know, you don't dive into you know, the conversations happening there or there and, you know, the, the no, history, go, the history of life. There. I'm cutting off. I'm so sorry, but go a little bit deeper Some in host. that. I'm going a little deeper because I'll never forget. We were walking the streets of Florence, Italy, and we were crossing this. What is the bridge? Do you remember the name of the bridge oh, where they had all the, the jewelry, shops? The jewelers. Oh, we're going to have to look it up. Um, in Florence. This is terrible. We should know it because it's like a very well-known bridge and they have all these shops. And we were just walking across. And do you remember what you said to me? It's, it's exactly kind of what you were just saying. You were like, you were like, do you know what I love? I love that I have no idea what anyone is saying. I just feel like I am in my own world. And it's, I didn't really realize that, but it's true. All of a sudden we're walking through these shops and you can't understand the language. And so you're not like caught up in what anybody else is saying. You're really just in your, you're enjoying the moment really because your, your mind's not being pulled to anybody else's conversations. You're just really enjoying the moment. That was a big that was a cool realization that I don't think I would have realized without you saying that. So I cut you off. Okay. You were talking about the history. Uh, yeah. Um, I went to school for, for art history years and years ago. And, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the things I had been taught in those days, uh, I got to experience, uh, having, having been there and seen it particularly in Florence, but, um, you know, just being in Rome and, and seeing those things too, was just one of the greatest places, um, to experience whether you know you're in the central part or northern part or we, we didn't actually experience the, the southern part of italy but um it, it was just really pleasant everyone was fantastic the food obviously was great the wine of course and um just to split the scene uh was really a great disconnect and a, a, a true vacation i think disconnect that's like the perfect word Totally. That's what we experienced. So we're in this room in Paso Robles, which does it remind you at all of the Tuscany hotel we stayed in? No. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping it would because we stayed in this epic Tuscany hotel and, uh, we stayed there for four nights 
It was one of the most amazing places I've ever stayed. I'll link to it. And we had these epic views. And it for us, we needed to have some time to just work and like check in on stuff. And so we worked a lot of that trip, but we got to do some really amazing things. But taking time out from your schedule, taking a break, being in a new environment creates all this new creativity and inspiration. And that is so what happened for you, right? That's right. That yeah. was so fun to see. Like I've never seen you like unlock yourself like I saw on that trip. It was like being in a castle in the middle of nowhere and being really completely catered to considering it was December at the time and we were only one of just maybe two or three other guests. Um, and as our time there sort of expanded along, we then were the only guest. And it was amazing because even in – um, having to go downstairs for, for breakfast or, you know, lunch or even dinner. They made home. all arrangements uh, to essentially make every single table in the restaurant a two-top. <laughs> so whether the table was large enough for six or eight, every single table, considering we were the only ones there, uh, was for a two-top. And it would be cool if you linked to that place because yeah. th that sort of um, attention to detail is really what makes the difference in, you know, one place to another. It was a, um, a peaceful setting. It was like nothing like we've ever experienced. And we got to live there for several nights. And the spa was epic. Mm -hmm. um, it was so interesting. This is such a side note. I, but like the spa. So you have the, the women's side and then the male side. But the women could go in the male side. But they didn't. They never I showed did. up. I, well, I did. I went over onto the male side. Remember? We were sitting in that steam room with that guy. <laughs> yeah. I did, and then yeah. we did the eucalyptus shower. Yeah, that's right. You're like, that's right. so I mean, but isn't that sort of weird? Like the dudes get no privacy. Just it's different, different culture, different way of living. Beautiful landscape. Okay, we love Italy. So Italy is your choice. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. No I kind of figured that. So why do you think that we've worked for so long, so well? Because we we have a lot of fun. I think. Would you agree? That's true. We do. And we rarely fight. We have good conversations and discussions, but not really, we don't really fight. Um, why would you, what would you say is one of those reasons that we just work? We are a good balance of one's lack to the other's sort of um, extra or um, not lack, but uh, or what, what balance? Would be, with the balance, but um, the things in which I lack and you make up the difference and, and vice versa. I think there's a lot of that that happens with us. I, th I think we um, are interesting to each other. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm having a hard time with it's the microphone thing. It's going to be hard for thing. me with editing. Yeah. Okay, this is keep, Florence, keep talking about how we're amazing. Oh, here's our little girl. Florence was named after Florence, Italy. Yeah. Um, okay, so the balance. Uh, we're a good balance uh, of each other. Um, I'm a little bigger of a risk taker, and um, I, uh, and yeah, we we get along quite. I mean, very good. Never fight. I also think that there's just so much trust. That's another thing. Trust. We too. have like a ridiculous. It's just like, I trust you. Yeah. You trust me. That's up there also. Yeah. 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 We're Why very do you... secure. I think you know, in our relationship, we're very secure and. Um, uh, very comfortable in that, and um, I, I think uh, <laughs> I want to just set it on my knee and just sit right here and talk like this. I mean, you can do what you want. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the trust is, is another thing. Um, I, there's never really any concerns to, to, to anything. Um, you know, a lot of people have a hard time with that kind of stuff. Do you think that our trust – comes from our own secure within i think that that has something to do with it of being like secure within because i do feel like we both are that and then but what what would you say like why do we trust each other so much i don't know if you've ever been in a relationship where you haven't trust the person i have i've been in that where it's like it's a confidence in yourself for sure um that that i think is is um that that's an ingredient for a, a trusting relationship, you know, trusting yourself. And, um, we both do, uh, very much. And, um, 
yeah, there's there's little concerns and and the ability to have freedom in mm. you know going out and go. doing mm-hmm. what you want with you, who you want um, whenever you know you want to do it. Um, being your own person is key, and you know maintaining the person who you were even before you had met. Which you know it gets harder as you're older, considering the, the responsibilities that come. But life changes in time, and you change as a person, and the the amount of change that really that that have come with me having met you is really, I look at it and it's, it's, it's pretty big. I think some people might think I'm can change com- completely. Although, you know, the spirit of, you know, who I was maybe 10 years ago is, is the same, but, um, I'm, I'm like an adult almost <laughs> sort of. But some would say, <laughs> some, some would say, some know me though. <laughs> but I have to add on w- when you said freedom. So my dear friend Julie and I, when before I met Dustin, we were on this. We worked together, and we were on this train from Denver, Colorado, to Chicago, and uh, we sat because I don't know if you've ever taken a train before, but you sit next to the person you're traveling with, and then you sit across from strangers, and the strangers across from us were this older couple in their 70s, 80s, probably 70s, and they were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, I believe. Like, they either had been married for 50 years or they were celebrating, and so Julie asked, what is the secret to your long lasting marriage. And they said, being our own person, he was like, I get to go golf with my friends every week and she never complains about it. And she just lets me do it. And and she likes to go shopping and I don't complain about it. Like we have to have our own things, but then we still have our things together. And I still believe in that. Like you have to be your own person. Yeah. I have tons of friends and everyone, you know, particularly on the guy side of things, I would think uh, it often happens where, um, you know, you have a, a friend who meets someone and the, the dynamic of who they are as a person completely changes. And, and in some ways they're gone. Um, that happens often. And I think, um, you know, with me, maybe that, that has happened in some way, but, um, there's no disconnect of friendship based on, you know, what my interests are and, and really have become in, in that time. So, um, you know, people get a girlfriend or they get a boyfriend and, you know, they're, they're, they're gone for as long as that relationship exists or they're just gone. You know, mm-hmm. that, that does happen. Or so just different forever, different, different forever. And maybe just not as, um, it's just not, maybe not the same as it was prior to. And, um, I think with us that that's never changed with our people. We never, you know, disconnected with anybody that, um, was there prior to us, I guess. Yeah, Totally. Um, okay, so one thing We're I fucking think... fucking cool is what I'm saying. Cheers. Right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, we're we're cool. We're okay. We're not, you know, we're good, right? No, we're s- super cool. Oh, yeah, we're cool. Yeah, okay. super cool. We'll come across pretentious, but that, that's more like a thing. On my last episode, I talked about how I want people to tell me I'm fucking amazing. So... <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't I, can be, I can be cool. I haven't seen any of the episodes, so this is really just a freestyle, and I... I honestly don't like to be on camera. I did a, a <laughs> <laughs> I did a, um, I did a, um, a pitch for uh, a, a, <laughs> a mortgage friend of mine when I first started with real estate, and um, it was really to be just a simple pitch on my business and like a promo for for my business. I got in front of that fucking camera and <laughs> I just couldn't speak at all. I was completely petrified. Yeah. I looked. I, I didn't see the video for some time after that, but it hit online and I was just like, oh my God, I will never go on video. So that, this is actually the first time I've done anything that's going to go out. Ever. Since, since then. then. Yeah. I, I, for years after I left, I was with Keller Williams at the time. I begged the mortgage company to <laughs> find, you? yeah, to find that video, whoever was in charge of their like video marketing stuff and say, get that thing off. I was just <laughs> sweating and yeah. you he wouldn't blink. Sh- he wouldn't <laughs> blink. <laughs> <Not> blink. <laughs> I joke like, about oh, this. I like Morgan. Yeah. Oh god, it was If brutal. you've ever I have like a handful of people who've been to my workshops and actually in some of my um in my seminars I talk about this how some people just aren't great on camera and I talk I joke about how Dustin did this thing for, and he was like and I also thought they were great to work with. <laughs> Just like sweat, it was terrible. And they put it, it was... out there to the world. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that probably explained my 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 bad first couple of oh. years to the business. <laughs> is that why? Like, Look at this tool. <laughs> What a is doofus. That, is that why? Maybe. I oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's oh, bad. that's funny. Well, um, I love you being here. You're doing great. So I want you to tell me about what it was like growing up in Troy, New York. But while you do that, I'm going to just step away just to let our dog up on the bed because he can't jump. And I know he wants to. And he's been looking oh, at us. Yeah. So I want you to tell the people. And I'm right here. I'm still listening. Okay. What it was like growing up in Troy, Troy, New York. I didn't really grow up in Troy, New York. Troy is like the big city. I grew up in a very small town, Melrose, New York, which is just about, you know, on the outskirts. So um, I'm really like a farm boy. Uh, I was born um, um, on a farm. Well, I, not on a farm, but my parents were farmers when I was born. He was born in barn. I was born in barn, everybody. I maintain to myself a lot. Um, I have, you know, close friends who are still, you know, with me to this day, you know, um, but generally reserved, an only child. I lived, you know, um, I lived pretty much with one neighbor for many years who happened to be my bus driver, Bruce Aiken, who, which, who was just one of the greatest guys of all time. Shout out to uh, Bruce. Shout out to Bruce. Yeah, what a fantastic person, him and his wife, Joan, um, who uh, Bruce has since passed. But Joan, who I actually got the chance to visit, um, um, still there in New York. But um, so I was the first one on the bus and the last one off, and I would hang out with Bruce um, many times if my parents didn't happen to be home or even sometimes when, when they were, and uh, we would eat Planter's Peanuts and, and Cokes, and he would just hang out, and he had this piano tuning shop that um, I, I would hang out in. And so maybe like one of my first closest friends uh, being being Bruce Aiken, of course, but um, a, another dear friend I have, Paul Fusco, who lived um, just down the way from me when I was – first born um in, in that barn but um, um it wasn't until i went to college where um you know I, I went to albany i remember going to the mall for the first time and just blown away because i had never seen anything like what that was and um yeah so i'm a, I'm a country boy really at, at heart but um Smart like a city kid, I think, if, if that means anything. Of course it does. And um, I'm feeling like a bad interviewer for a couple of reasons. One, I'm like trying to get – I would never – just throwing stuff at me and bailing everybody. But um, I said that you – what was like growing up in Troy and you didn't – She's even, not even – didn't, didn't grow up grow in Troy. Up in Troy. <sighs> she doesn't even know me. Well, it's because we've been together for only 11 years. So yeah, I so need we haven't another, talked about where we were born Yeah, we don't even know. I know. No, but you were born in Troy. Oh, actually, I was born in Troy <laughs> – I was born in a hospital in Troy, but I lived in a farm. In a in barn. Like, in a barn. <laughs> I was born in Troy, just like other people were born in a city, but like live in the country. So that's right. my story. Okay. Okay. Um, so for some people watching, and probably everybody that's watching at this point knows us already. But yep. if there's anybody new. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, um, right. Yeah, yeah. Click. But if there is anybody new, both of your parents have passed. Yep. How old were you when your dad died? Oh, my gosh. Um, I was 30, 29 or 30 or 31. It was in 2009. So I would have been, um, what would 31. I have been? 31. Yeah, I think right before you turned 31. Yeah, it was uh, like a month before. Um, I was 31. And then um, my mom died a few years later. Um, I was 35, mm -hmm. 35 at the time when my mom died. That's definitely something that has defined who you are. I feel that through losing both of your parents, so none of our friends have gone through that. We're, oh, we we're have, starting to we get to a point where friends are losing parents, but we don't have anybody who has lost both parents. But my point in saying that is you have gained a ton of perspective in losing both parents and you have taught me a lot through that for example one of the big things that you often say is like I'll, I'll be talking about my mom or dad or whatever and you'll be like say it tell them do they know that do it what just do it you know like what are you waiting for it's just so obvious for you because you probably wish you had that opportunity or had that time. So it's, it's that perspective. Um, I would love to hear from you about what, if you have any advice or what you've gained through that for anybody 
kind of an open-ended, where do you want to go with this? But you've got a lot of perspective from losing both your parents. Um, it has changed who I am. It changed the way I look at life. I really don't give a shit about dumb stuff um, because it's all so small now. Everything, the most, uh, life is just, um, it, it's different. The way I look at it is different. Um, your point about saying what you want to say, I think, you know, you just do it. Um, you would be better off considering the opportunity you have now um, than maybe one that you won't tomorrow. Um, even whether good or bad, the things you want to say, um, I would suggest you do it. Regardless of how the, the relationship is, I say you do it. Um, and it's not as much about either one of you. I think it's good for both both of you to um, your, your parent and yourself to, to go out there and say those things because it's all bullshit really, you know? Well, and something, so yes, you, you've really helped in some, sometimes I get annoyed with that in the sense that I like want to be mad about something. And Dustin's like, this is so stupid. What do you care about? You know? And I'm like, but I want to be mad, you know? Um, and there, I can be mad. There could be a right to that, but it's a really fabulous mirror almost to get that kind of perspective back at me. And so then you all of a sudden think about it a little differently and you're like, Oh, okay. I also feel like, sorry, we're going to say something. I was just going to say everything. Generally speaking, everything is so small. Um, there's just, it, it, things have their tendency to feel heavy, but are just, not. Um, and I've become numb, I think, in many ways. And I think that's something that... It's not um, always great. That is not great for... Me? It's not great for maybe the people around you um, than it is t to yourself. And it's not, it's not a matter of not caring. It's just a matter of it not being a, a difficult time of, under, of... I can relate. I can understand. But I don't... Um, I'm tired, I guess. Right. It's just like I don't know what to say, um, and it's just sort of time to, I don't know. In, in the, the liberation I feel with that mindset, it really has an effect on some of the people around me based on the fact that they might not think I give a shit. Um, and it's not that. Um, it's not that at all. I know. Um, and I, I'll do what I can, but um, it's maybe a... Um, not understanding that, you know, the, to the level of importance it is to you because it, I can't contemplate how it could be that important, really. Well, I mean, there... That sounds like an asshole thing to say. That, well, that's sort and of how I sure, but that, that's fine. <laughs> you say how you feel. We're on corks, right? Well, we're on I cork, mean, this everybody. Is, we're opening who, who up. Fuck your feelings. I mean, sometimes I feel like... I, somebody has to die or be in the hospital or something for you to like really care and be there. Right. But I know that you're always there and I know that you care. I feel like something big or traumatic has to happen for you to like really go there. But here's my, what I've learned over the years is that if I'm wanting more of attention or like, um, if it's not death, life or death, you're probably not the best person to go to. And if I do go to you, then I know what I'm getting, right? And you do your best. But I then have other people that I can go to. Like, you can't have one person in your life and you're expecting everything out of them. That's true. Right? That's a good point. It's I, I can't offer all things. Um, maybe I used to at one time. I probably did. I, I, what, I think you were I, perfect? I was perfect before, everybody. But not anymore. I, so um, I would like everyone to has brings their own sort of potluck to the party or whatever whatever it is. So you know you'll get certain things from other people you won't get, and if you expect that, um, you know that's fine. It's hard to ask somebody to be different or to think different or to believe different. You can, but I'm not confident that really works. And you would be better off finding it from you know someone who you can expect to, to, to get those things from per perhaps my thing being, it's not that I, like I said, it's not like I don't care. It's more of like, I don't understand. 
Which might answer my next question. If you can answer this in like a minute or less. When I was prepping for this interview, I'm very official. I, I was writing a lot about you don't sweat the small stuff, which is so funny because you kept saying the small stuff. Um, I think that when we're in our everyday life, it can be easy for small stuff to take over. So how do you even all the time not sweat the small stuff? Like, does that for you just come with what you've gone through in your life and the perspective or is it something you have to work on or what? That's a great question. I think to maintain some sort of level headedness, no matter how stressed out you are or how heavy things feel around you. And, um, I think my dad was actually good at that. Um, I think he held to himself in a lot of ways. And, um, even my grandparents, I would, some people would say, you know, my, my grandfather was like that. And people on, on my Pizer side of, of things were like that kind of person. And I, I would believe that it, first of all, I feel good about it. Um, and I want to maintain that mindset. So, um, it's not always easy, but if you look at, um, if you look at the more positive side of something, um, it really saves you from unnecessary dramas. People like to bitch. Here's the thing. Mm. I have learned that people often just want to hear themselves complain. They don't even need to complain to anyone in particular. They just want to hear themselves be negative. Like I'll go there sometimes. Well, yeah, it's good. I have. Good I'll friends. bitch about like I just I'm so stressed and I'm fucking unloading and it's like, do you just why don't you shut up and just do something uh, versus bitch? And I start catching myself about that now, but I'm sorry I cut you off. Yeah. Um, so people often I think just want to hear themselves out. Um, let it out that their anger or their frustrations or whatever and um, their feelings or their opinions and um, it's all cool but um, you know do it do that shit to yourself but you it's know? not that, constructive it's not constructive and you know in, in political going to the political side of things and the arguments and the the the, 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 um, the wanting to you know hear yourself complain about stuff um, you know, find a person that's maybe on the other side of it that, you know, you can openly have those conversations and call them a little bitch or, you know, call them an asshole and know and that, also ask questions and though. ask questions and know that, you know what, no matter what this kid says, that's cool. I understand. I, I might not want to understand, but considering, you know, life experience, all of those things, I, I ultimately respect that person. And therefore, you know, um, I, I can I can have that kind of conversation. I would rather have that conversation with someone than to post on Facebook how I'm a whiny little bitch about some mm. stupid thing. And you know, to what? But that's to comfort. To, to that's comfort to... for people. It's like they're not comfortable to have it with other people. Or yeah, I mean, it's just it's all so small. And um, yeah. to to maintain a level headedness about it is to know that. Um, it could all be so much worse and I ju you just need to continue pumping and on and it can and be, be a positive so influence deep. around sort of the people around you to the best that you can. It's okay to be down. Um, but you know, find the right person to be down with, I guess. Is that a quote? Uh, just, it is find, now. Are, do we have a quote graphic here? Find quote the graphic. Find the right boop, person boop, 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 to be boop. down with. You find the right person to be down with. And and down could be in many ways. Yeah. Could be, I'm down with you, boo. Down with I'm you, down boo. With you, boo. Or it could be like I'm down, mad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I want to switch gears. Switching gears. Uh, something about Dustin that I really feel like has come to you over the past couple of years has been a meaning in, Oh, she's so cozy on my lap. She probably looks depressed. Um, but you know, that's, she's not, she's just perfect. Um, something that I feel like has been more meaningful to you over the past couple of years is legacy, creating right. legacy, something that lives on beyond you. We, we don't want to have kids. That is going to be a future episode. I've never wanted kids. So kids can often be legacy, right? That's, you know, obviously. Uh, for you, you've been saying that a little bit more. I feel like your mind has been going there. 
and you are moving into that with several different businesses, but I feel like, would you say, so Dustin is a realtor, like I mentioned, he also has a lead generation um, serve it. He does all sorts of stuff with realtors and then also has a card collecting business, which is like not the right way to say it. It's sports mm -hmm. cards and memorabilia. She don't care. Just kidding. <laughs> she cares very much. <laughs> Cut. Do Cut. you want to see fire come from my ears? Fire emoji. Oh my gosh. Um, I obviously care. Cut, we're starting now over. No, again. I'm keeping this. <laughs> this is being kept. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get cut. I want to <laughs> talk about legacy though. Why, why, what happened over the, like, it's a newer thing that you've been talking about. So where has this come from for you of wanting that legacy? The, the not having kids. Um, I'm grown content with the idea of that. Um, Did you want kids? You, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. It's been a what? long t it's been a long time since I've wanted kids. Be you know, I've never. It's only been um, eleven years. Well, yeah. I mean, the the thought of it had been okay at times, and even with you, it's okay at times. But it's not something interesting to us particularly. Um, and with that, it's more of you know the creation of something that exists beyond you. And um, I would rather do it in a way of business or an idea or a change in the way something is done and um, I, having gone to school for art I look at you know art doesn't have to be a painting or a drawing or anything like that it can be the creation of the way things are done or um, a model for something uh, a disruption in um, a system is art the, the creation of you know not just a logo of art but how a business or an idea works um, a living piece of art, really. And um, I've been more caught up in the concept of that than obviously children, but even my day-to-day -day real estate agent job, I would rather do something that's maybe on this end similar but different within real estate because it's, it's a cool business. It's the kind of business you could do it in whatever way you want. If you can change something for the better that's universal to all the things that um, have been done in that in that way in the past and um, it, it's a continuation beyond you I could die tomorrow and my idea the system that I created through art in a business exists and it changes the dynamic of things and that's that's the legacy thing that's the business thing it's not it's not even about the money or anything like that it's about the idea of creating something that lives longer than you for many people that's kids I'd rather create a business that maybe helps some of the people that um, you know, my, my, my friend's kids or, you know, my, my nieces or my nephew or whatever that it might be. So um, I would rather do that. Um, I enjoy the challenge of that. Um, it's come with some real struggles and things, you know, having worked for the post office for many years and deciding that, fuck, I don't want this job anymore. Um, although they've been very good to me and, you know, the post office is maybe a dying breed or uh, it's certainly in many cases a thankless job. So when having been there for 10 years and deciding I don't want to do that because watching Crystal and um, her company, Crystal Media, being able to see, you know, the passion of fucking creating something that is yours. It's your baby. It was nothing. It, it came from absolutely nothing. And to watch the, the passion and the excitement of making something that's your own, um, I thought, holy shit, that's fucking the coolest thing I've ever seen. And you know what? I remember when I sold this house and I bought this house and I had all my roommates move in and how awesome real estate was and how cool the business it was. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to leave the post office and do real estate. And of course, Crystal was very supportive and um, legacy within you know Crystal Media. That was sort of the beginning of the idea, I think, of legacy. Um, watching that unfold and then being motivated to be like, okay, well, real estate's cool and it's been fun, but how can you do it differently? And then you get older and now 42 or whatever, and you think, well, the kid's situation, I'm grown comfortable with the fact that that's not going to happen because, you know what, I want to live in Colorado. I want to live in New York. I want to live in Hawaii. I don't, I don't expect or want to have to have kids, you know, be responsible for taking care of me when I'm older. I would rather, you know, build businesses that maybe make me wealthy enough where some stranger takes care of me. I don't care, you know, but I love the, um, the, the creation of legacy without banging. So do you think it's, 
<laughs> I don't know, honey. Please catch that. Do you think, though, that it's – I do know that you care about the legacy, but I think that you are wildly interested in the creation of legacy. That's right, yeah. If you can make something better than it already is – or design an idea that changes the world, maybe for the better, whether it's, you know, we have a nonprofit that having lost Bruiser, Crystal's dog that she's had for many years, I couldn't put it this way. Having lost that dog was almost worse than having lost my parents in some way. The, the loss I felt that next day was <laughs> strangely deeper than, you know, having, you know, lost my own parents. And so, you know, we went out and built a, um, uh, a nonprofit uh, called the Bruiser Woods Velchitis Foundation um, related to a pet's unexpected illness or death. And it's like, cool, even if you just – we can cover, you know, the cremation costs of a dog right. or a cat or a bunny or whatever it is, that's cool. That's legacy, and that's easy. That's an easy continuation of things that could exist beyond us. That was easy. But then you get into some of the other businesses, and it's like, okay, well, this is a little more complex, and it's a little different. But um, it's it's the challenges of building it that are – put it this way. It's, it's The hard part is the most interesting and enjoyable part in it. But it's fucking stressful a lot. Mm -hmm. I've – I've struggled badly um, multiple times in having since left the post office. But it wasn't it wasn't always easy. So, um, but for the sake of creating legacy, every second is worth it. And you know, Crystal has been there to support you know a lot of those ideas that you know other people might not other, be interested in doing that. So thanks, thanks, babies. Well, of course, I believe in you, yeah. and you know that I also believe in a life. By design. She's hard to keep up with, everybody. A life by design. She's very hard to keep up with, and all you, of our friends will, will tell you that. You don't have to keep up with me. Just be a part of this <laughs> world. It's not even about that. I want to say something, though. You were like, it's not been easy, but if it was easy, everybody would fucking do it. That's true. Yep. So, of course, it hasn't been easy, and way to go for doing it yeah. and trying and showing up. Like, that takes a lot of courage. So, yeah. Thanks. It's been fun to watch that. Yeah, just like watching Crystal Media be born. And this. This was an idea that was brought up three years ago. Or maybe it was around three years three ago. Three and a half years ago. I'm like, fucking do it. She's like, Every, I don't know exactly yep, what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I was like, does it even matter? We still, do you even know what it's going to be? No, I mean. Not really. Does it matter? You do cool stuff and you throw it out there. You see what sticks. Yep. People are going to talk shit. They're probably going to talk stuff, you know, on this <laughs> on this video or for whatever. And that's fine. Um, it's you know, a reflection of perhaps someone's own sadness, some would say, and maybe analyze Well, there's that. like no doubt that there is like major cyberbullying. Yeah. So anybody that puts themselves out there. I want to know everyone's best bully on me in the comments. I want you to make fun of my, my long fingers, oh, my, you, my bony knuckles. You want to hear it? The way I talk. Oh, yeah. I just want so much shit talked about okay. me. And um, the, the, the winner of the worst diss um, gets... Um, uh, a virtual Apple, high five. A, 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 no, no, no. A, a five dollar gift certificate to Applebee's. There you go. Oh, get themselves a molten chocolate yeah, I just cake. Need, I just need to know your mailing address. And then a five dollar. Yeah. Uh, we don't diss me, then give me your mailing address. I don't want to encourage negativity on my channel. <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. diss me. <laughs> <laughs> diss me, then give you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're ridiculous. I'm just kidding. He's funny. I'm just kidding. That's another thing I think that keeps us going, though. You make mm -hmm. me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going <laughs> to... You're hilarious. For those who follow sports, so I typically have a female audience. So if you have a kid, a husband, a brother, a dad... I don't want to just say that it's all dudes, but, like, it's pretty heavy in the dude world of sports card collecting and holy shit it's like the stock market now it's really insane what's been happening and if you don't follow it all you're like what is she even talking about we took a turn i don't know where we're going now but like it's a real amazing thing that's happened i grew up my dad collected cards he i will never forget would like walk out in the living room and he was on the floor you know going through all of his cards and organizing and alphabetizing like it's a big collectors it's a hobby right 
So what I want to know from you, Mr. Dustin Pizer, is over the next three to six months or just like, you know, near future, who's somebody people should be watching? If we have any collectors watching, um, and I know like we don't want to give away all the secrets or maybe you're open to doing that, but like what, what, who, who are, who do you have your eye on? Um, uh that's an interesting question and one I wasn't expecting, but um, it's not really as much about a person. It's more about the, the, the what. I think, um, you know, one of the, the passion projects or things I've created was, you know, a lead generation service for collectors of sports cards and memorabilia, which is extremely light in comparison to the heaviness that often comes with a real estate transaction. And it's really passive sort of hobby and one that's just ex essentially has blown up in the last couple of years. But... Um, Stay away from the new stuff. Um, I would be led to believe that there's more interesting stuff out there in someone's garage or basement or, you know, attic that, you know, hadn't otherwise been seen in, in forever and, and, and try to find those things. Um, I know that people are, are getting um, pushed out of the way to suck up boxes or whether they're buying these things at Target or Walmart. Um, it's just not interesting. I think a lot of it's... Um, um, really, you know, sort of overproduced in the same way it was when I was a kid and, and started getting into it. So, you know, focus more on, you know, the private collections than what's being put out on, in the stores. It's just, it's just better. Um, mm. And, you know, for anyone, whether you're collecting passively or, or now suddenly, you know, an investor in this stuff, be cautious uh, because the same thing essentially um, uh, that happened back in, you know, the early nineties is, is really happening now. And um, it's, doesn't make sense, really. Um, and I, I think a lot of people, uh, it really those in the right mind would agree with that. But, um, yeah, that would be my advice. It's not about a player. You know, buy the, buy the things of the people that you like. It doesn't matter if they're good this year and, and terrible next or, you know, good whenever. Um, just buy what you like. Which is interesting because Warren Buffett says buy what you use consume from a yeah. stock perspective right yeah. so you're kind of saying that same it's thing same of thing. what you believe because in. at least if at least if it goes south you still like it you know yeah. it's like buying a house you buy a house and it's like well shit the market has dropped but guess what i love my fucking house and that's right. cool i just need to deal with the consequences of what this mortgage payment is still now and blah 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 <laughs> or whatever that might be which is much heavier than baseball cards, you know? Yeah. So right. it's the same thing. Buy what you like. Yeah. So, uh, if you have questions about a collection that you might have, Dustin Pizer is the person to talk to go to collecting all.com. He has a form there where you can, if you have a collection, he asks all sorts of questions to understand your collection. You can upload pictures to it. He can help you in in giving you an idea of what it might be worth. He can help you find somebody to buy it. Um, he can help you just sell it there. It's pretty amazing what this man knows when it comes to cards and the people that he has who fucking love cards and want to potentially buy your collection. I just feel like so many people have stuff and they just don't know if it's worth anything or they need to downsize or whatever. So collecting all.com is the place that you need to go. And we are going to we are going to conclude this episode. Before I do, anything else you want to share with the people? Um, first of all, it's been an honor to be on your show, Babis. First this is guest. fucking cool. It's gonna be even cooler. I know. Um, just the the idea of having the opportunity to chat with you know friends and um, people who aren't really famous. And I think getting those stories make it relatable, relatable. Yeah. You know, um, so I'm very proud of you. Um, I know that this is going to be cool. Don't even know exactly what it is yet, but it will speak for itself. And, um, you know, just like baseball cards, it's a, it's a passion project. Mm. It, it's to be taken very seriously and not seriously at all at mm. the same time. And that's the beauty of it. It's the way that, you know, you can have both, both, the cake and eat it too. Is that what the yeah is? <laughs> yeah you can have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, so yeah. you know, have fun with this channel, and um, maybe I'll be back on someday again. And you will be. Um, You're an excellent guest. Everybody will um, you know tune into the new stuff um, and follow us on uh, or, or Crystal on her. <laughs> follow, follow us. us. <laughs> follow us, everybody. 
It's the Dustin it's Show Crystal with Dustin Crystal. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Thank you for the promotion. Yep. <laughs> Follow anyway. us. So, um, yep. Yep. so, tune in, and it will be awesome. And um, um, thanks for giving a shit if you do or if you don't. Oh, yeah. Amen to that. Thanks for giving a shit. <laughs> uh, cheers. We have to be. <laughs> hey, everybody. Be. Thanks for giving a shit. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> it should be. Seriously, thank you. Yeah. Love this was really great. I love you. All right. We had our first guest, so actually, no, I have one last question. Oh, one last question. Why aren't we married yet? You haven't asked. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> you know, why aren't we married yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You knew this question was coming. No, I didn't. I didn't know. Um, well, because, put it this way, in all of the things I've just talked about, there's a certain desire to have a grip on your own life prior to bringing someone into it in that sort of way. And in all of the things that I've experienced in this time, I've become more in tune to who I am and in that what I want to be, I think. So um, I can't help but to feel, and it's obvious, I think even to the people that are, are around me, that um, I'm getting very close to... Um, being a, a completed person in myself, um, which ironically doesn't come without you. Um, it's just a, a, a comfort thing to me, a, a personal way in which to prove my, myself before proving it to anyone else. So it's nothing against Crystal or, or anything like that. It's, it's my own self-perception and really how this whole interview started, that very question, um, you know, being true to yourself and confident in yourself. You know, I am but there's things I want to still prove within my own sort of dynamic of living, um, which some would say I'm there. I think a lot of people might say that I'm there, and I, that might be the beef of um, you know, people that ask you that question. Well, what, what do you have to prove that I can't be a part I of need... or in your supporting wings as your wife versus girlfriend? Well, I think it's a matter of my own compl sense of completion with my own single life story. Will you ever be complete? Um, not without you. So then she's going to propose everybody. No, I'm not. <laughs> I will say there was a time where I thought I didn't want to get married. That's true. And so I said, I don't want to get married. And we had this whole, like, we were out at blue ocean at a restaurant in Carlsbad. And I said that, and we told our friends. And then like a year later, I was sort of like talking about it and friends were like, well, I thought you didn't want to get married. So then I, everybody got confused. I'm like, fuck, they really believed <laughs> me. Like I, that was just like a thought for a bit. I wasn't really what I felt in that moment. I guess it was, but I think that that threw everybody and then kind of delayed things. But, um, I've had ideas in the past and, and certain things would unfold and it, that, that, that idea of doing that at that time just went south. You had ideas of proposing? I've had ideas. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd they go south? On the next episode, everybody. Okay, yeah. Okay, we do have to talk about that and why they went south. This is a long episode, which it could be long. I mean, people are going to want to know this. I have to know this. This is a cliffhanger, everybody, to the next episode. No, the next episode is actually <laughs> Entrepreneur Lessons. Three things, three tipping points that I've learned to take me to the next level. But do we have to shelf that and talk about, like, this? <laughs> like, no. Everyone's like, this fucking interview went south. No, I mean, I, well, maybe. Who knows? We don't know. Okay, we are going to conclude it there. I honestly, I'm, like, excited to hear that. that there so has she's going to have to wait. That there has been at least thought. But I do think that it's important to know that you don't have to be complete. That's never going to happen. We're always evolving. You can feel the need to want to be complete, and that's fine. I mean, that's your life story. Um, I think it's important to feel a certain level of completeness in your own self, whether with or without somebody. With or without you. With or without you. With or you guys want to see you want, want a karaoke session no, real please. quick? No, no, no. No, no, no. Karaoke? No, no. I'm going to edit it out. We Who have to go because karaoke? we're uh, the battery is dying. So truly, though, in the next episode, 
I, we're going to talk about business life. We're going to talk about entrepreneurial life. Do you like how we just segment? I'm like, nope, we're not doing karaoke. We're going right there. I do have three tips on what has taken me to the next level in my business. Let's, let's give the and, audience a fourth tip real quick. Well, do you know my three? No, but let's so, hear a fourth one. Right now? Yeah, for the audience. Oh, so you want to put me on the spot? Yeah, let's let's interview Crystal real quick. We want the fourth tip, everybody, and then we want everybody's advice in the comments section of what you think is a major tip for um, going next level. Yeah, going next level. Who, yeah. What advice do you have for going next level? Yeah. One one, one thing. Okay, so I would l I love that you're doing this. This is where I have this written down, but we just didn't have time. Um, you have to come back on because you have such a marketing mind. And one of my questions was give my listeners a tip from a marketing perspective. Dustin is so good with marketing. Um, and just thought provoking questions. So come back on because the battery is dying. My fourth tip. So you'll hear three and really like, I feel like what I'm about to say should be in the top three, but there has been several things that's helped me take my business to new levels and one of those is that I, I guess I won't share in the next episode is really staying true to you. I once heard like stay in your own lane. I think Oprah said it or somebody said it on a book or podcast, like stay in your lane, basically being authentic to who you are. And I am somebody who can get caught up in what everybody else is doing and change the way I'm doing things. And that hasn't worked out for me in the past. But when I stay really true to who I am, which I feel like Crystal and Corked, I mean, you know, we kind of have a, had a little viral reel last night. It was like a very real to me situation. Um, just being you is hard to beat. Nobody can beat that, right? Like competition doesn't exist when you're just yourself. So that would be my fourth tip. Um, That's a good one. I will have three more on episode four. So tune in, which is happening very soon. Dustin asked you to leave comments of what your tip is. If you are a business owner, but even if you are not a business owner and you are self, uh, I was going to say you're self-employed, same thing. Um, if you work for somebody, what has been that tip that's just helped you level up? Like this is about sharing. This is about community. Like let's help each other. What has worked for you? Please share in a comment on Instagram or however you're viewing this, leave a comment. I would love to know. And uh, before this computer and dies, as they say, smash that like button. Oh, they is say, that? They say that. Oh, sm smash it. They, the youngins smash the like button, please. And uh, what else do they say? Subscribe and we love you. Leave a comment thank below. you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Cheers. Dustin, one last cheers. You're awesome. I love you. Love you too. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Crystal and Corked. Many more guests are going to join me and you will see Dustin back. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to see pictures of you listening to the show, a screenshot of your favorite episode and or your favorite wines. Share them with me. Just follow and tag at Crystal Uncorked. I can't wait to see you there. All right. I'll see you on the next See You.